designing a roller coaster, it's very important that the passengers make the loop. So for example, if you're at the top of the loop, but you have zero speed, you're just going to fall down. That's why, in order to make the loop, the roller coaster has to start off much higher so that it has significant speed at the top and makes the whole loop. Now, we'll use energy conservation to figure out what that height must be in order for the roller coaster to make the loop. And we're going to break this up into two steps. Step one, find the minimum speed needed at the top of the loop. And then step two, step two will then solve for H. Where H is the minimum height the roller coaster needs to start at in order to have the speed solved for in step one, which is then the speed necessary to safely make the loop. So, starting with step one, well, what is that, that condition to make the loop? Well, at the top of the loop, If I draw a free body diagram, I've got the force of gravity going down. And since you're going in a circle, the force of gravity is the centripetal force in this case. Thus, that acceleration, g, is the centripetal acceleration. So that necessary condition is that the centripetal acceleration is equal to the acceleration of gravity. So let's plug that in. So centripetal acceleration by definition is v squared over r and acceleration of gravity is about 10 meters per second squared. So we also know the, the loop radius, so that's v squared all over 10 meters and that's equal to our 10 meters per second squared here. And if I multiply both sides by 10 meters, cancel, cancel, I get that the speed v squared is equal to 100 meters squared second squared. And therefore, if I take the square root of both sides, I get that the minimum speed necessary at the top of the loop is 10 meters per second. Excellent. Step one. Now, let's solve for that height. Well, we use energy conservation. The initial energy equals the final energy. Ah, let me write our step two here. What is the initial energy? Well, roller coaster starts here, not moving. So all of the energy is potential energy of gravity. So that potential energy of gravity. And then this is our final situation here at the top of the loop. Here we have both potential energy of gravity and it's moving, so we also have kinetic energy. So here we can plug in mgh. Here we can plug in mgi. Ah, what is the height? Well, radius of 10 meters. So 10 plus 10 is 20. So 20 meters. And then plus the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Now, if we divide both sides by m, the m's go away. So let's do that. M, M. This tells us something very interesting. It tells us that that minimum height is independent of the mass of the roller coaster. 
that's a very good thing because if you're on a roller coaster with a bunch of really small people, you might worry it's going to go a different speed than it normally does. But don't worry, the speed is independent of the mass of the roller coaster. No matter what type of people get on, roller coaster is going to be going the same speed. Let's finish this problem so we can solve for that minimum height h. And we'll do that over here by plugging in the values. So we have g h equals g times 20 meters plus 1 half v squared. And we know that uh, this is simply, well, let's divide both sides by g first. And when you have an addition, both terms get divided. So we can cancel. And we get our new expression. H is equal to 20 meters plus 1 half V squared over G. And I know that the speed is 10 meters per second. 10 squared is 100 of 100 meters squared second squared, acceleration gravity, 10 meters per second squared. So this cancels with this. So 100 divided by 10 is 10. And 10, well, let me write it out, 20 meters plus 10 times a half is 5 meters. And so, when designing your roller coaster, make sure that the minimum height is two and a half times the radius of the loop. Because that's what we got, 25 meters for a 10 meter loop. Right?